The scientific community does not change its terms based on mainstream misconceptions. And why should I? Let's put martial arts in their historical context and their current context. And I asked you, the viewers, to answer me this. Should I be denied my rightful place and society denied the truth so that the elite and all the races that are similar like to them can look good? Page 11. Last pair. Uh, we'll start with um, defining uh, Angolo, I believe. The, the third paragraph, actually. The principal aim of these arts is to overcome an opponent by subduing him with strikes. Okay, so... The percursive arts were the Angola. In the case of Angolo, this is predominantly kicks, but also to train one's defenses, which in the case of Kandeka is accomplished by exchanging strikes with the open hands or sticks. So, you know, the Osirian sticks, you know, these are transferable skills. The Osirian priests, the stick fighters, okay? Um, so we move on. The unarmed percursive arts must be understood in relation to the percussive use of stick fighting, which provided a larger context both in the Angolan highlands and in the Caribbean. For within these two broadly spread areas of related martial traditions, this study focuses on the side hold grappling art from Biafra and the Kunini Pugilistic tradition of Central Africa. Notice they say, you know, martial traditions. So now we have martial ways, martial arts, martial traditions. And the martial arts sprung them all, right? You know, once you learn the fighting arts and you start understanding God, you create the tradition, right? It starts with the martial arts. That's the core. It's the essence of it, you know, of all this stuff. Although the Biafran grappling and the Angolan percussive arts were stylistically very different, both fulfilled similar social roles. Both were used as a form of entertainment when practiced to music, a form of dueling to settle personal scores, a ritualized form of conflict resolution, or a form of battlefield training for young soldiers. Notice all these things he's describing are not actual um, combat, uh, you know, skills, but ritual traditions to settle conflicts and what he described, you know, um, dueling and, and, you know, personal scores and what have you. Central to all con contexts is the concept of honor for the practitioner and often for the community through the honored practitioner. So being a martial artist means that you have honor. This is central to all contexts. This is the consensus in the academic community, especially in the African academic community. And you might think Africans are stupid, but you might want to think again. They're probably the most educated demographic in America, Africans from Nigeria. Mastery in either art could bring a skilled practitioner respect for his graceful execution, the admiration of potential wives, and economic advancement. Each art provided a path of spiritual development that could take an exceptional adept to one of the highest forms of honor in Africa, the status of a transcendent hero, someone who was initiated into full mastery of Angolo. Remember, this is the percussive styles going back to before. The principal aim of these arts is to overcome an opponent by subduing him with strikes. In the case of Angolo, this is predominantly kicks. So when you look at this thing, right, they're talking about hands and feet, you know, transferable skills, being quick on your feet, striking with your hands and feet. Practicing with sticks. Why aren't they doing it with swords? Because they're sparring. Just like Sibo said, you know, they're afraid to spar. I'll put the exact quote in the comments, you know. Yo, y'all don't want to spar. You know, in the song Revenge with, um, or it was, it was, uh, 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 it was, it was Sibo or Kilate in D Rome, you know, so it's in the gang community as well. It's like sparring. They understand. Y'all don't want to spar because we'll, we'll make it clear to you that we run this shit. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll back down. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? All right. Um, he became a special kind of ancestor, one who could physically manifest in the bodies of his descendants. So this is part of my religion, and mental health is trying to take that from me. This is ancestors, you know. Show me what to do, and, you know, show me how to judge this as the top martial artist chosen in the traditional manner, you know, by sparring. Y'all don't want to spar and establish who's the king, the king of martial arts. You know, think about being the king of the Crips, you know, Tuki or Trady or Seneca or whoever it may be. You know, think about these different lanes, right? You know, who's the king of this and why? I'm the king of martial arts and I'm calling to my ancestors and that is my sacred traditional role. Similarly, the Biafran art of Umba and its cognates could serve as a tool to achieve the highest of honors. A master of the martial art in Umba who remained true to the accompanying moral code could become a transcendent hero, the most honored of ancestors. So what is central to this? The accompanying moral code, you know, family, you know, the African traditions of masculinity and valuing this and separating the men and the women. 
they weren't, these guys weren't a bunch of bisexuals. This is, they had a moral code that had to do with African spirituality, not liberalism. And you all know it. Um, see, was, who could be called upon it for guidance in important matters and could reincarnate among the living while retaining a position among the dead ancestors. In this sense, both Angola and Umba can be understood as martial arts and more specifically as martial ways in the strict sense. And in this sense, Montu arts, um, when it comes to the percursive styles that, styles that I uh, have developed, one can call it Horus arts, named after me, you know, it'll get kind of confusing. There's different phases of Horus. Horus the Elder. I'm Horus the Conqueror. Horus that made them hide. I made my own martial arts system that made them hide because they don't want to spar. Are we clear? Are there any questions? I put my money where my mouth is. They can't say anything. They want to say it's a game of touch. Traditionally, this is how we prepare. I mean, they wrestled to prepare for battlefield training. You think they didn't fucking spar to decide who goes where? I demonstrated that masterfully with that Shaka Zulu training clip that not only they did, historians acknowledge it, and it's widely accepted in the academic community and even among, you know, Hollywood um, pseudo-scientific kind of ninny misrepresentation, Eurocentric, Judeo kind of media uh, type of people. So, do you see why it is my traditional right as an African who has evolved my ancestor styles. They said, look at the headhunters, look at the Angolans, look at the Ethiopians and their stick fighting, the Somalians, the Eritreans. Okay, look at all these peoples. Look at the Kenyans, Jomo Kenyatta. You know, you think he came from a bitch made tribe? Are you kidding? You know, these people didn't play and they were very serious. And when you're in Africa surrounded by these guys who are doing African martial arts who do not play, you know, you get forged into a great warrior. And that's what the headhunters were. They were on the borderlands of the Igbo's tribe. They were faced with the other tribes. They're like, you know, really? You want to come here to Igbo land? You know, the big ass, you know, spear uh, or, or, or and a Kanga knife, you know? You, you really want to come over here? That little sword, maybe? You Y'all want to come here? The short sword to cut off heads? Y'all really want to go come over here? Really? You know? And what did they care about? Transferable skills. Who were guarding the boarding lands? It wasn't the wrestlers. It was the head hunters. So how can you say that these other people are more important than the percussive guys and the weapons guys, such as myself? Again, there's three things you can do to try to prove me wrong. One of them is illegal, and I don't recommend you do it. But this is important enough to say, okay, never, first and foremost, you attack me in the streets. You know, preferably with a weapon no longer than six inches. Because... I'm probably not going to have a sword and, you know, you might want to make it somewhat fair. You don't have to. I can still find a way to defend myself. Number two, depending on how honorable you see yourself. Number two, you can beat me at sparring. Number three, give me one moment. I will let you pick which knife you want to use. Okay? And we can see who touches who first. One is a little bit longer. If you really think that, you know, the reach is that big of a deal, you got a couple extra inches with this one if you want to use it. It's a little bit heavier, a little clumsier. Kind of like people, motherfucker. You know, you want to compare the form of someone holding a a, a, a pin compared to, to the form of someone holding a fucking, like, long-ass, heavy fucking, you know, board? That's their argument. And think of your limbs as those weapons, as martial artists often do. Knife edge, you know, right? Surface area, two knuckles, right? 